In the last video, we developed the time path for Domer's growth model and we obtained the solution by going through these steps. Now we can solve this numerically and get more interpretable results. So this numerical is solved here. We know that this is the definite solution of the time path for investment. So if we unravel this, we can see that there is an exponential part in this expression. That is a natural exponential part. And the remaining term, that is the initial level of investment, has a minimum role to play, that is as a coefficient. So we have to focus on this part. And when we compare it with the standard form of the natural exponential function, we realize that t is the variable part and r is actually the rate of growth that we can consider here. So we compare it uh, and when we do, instead of R in the standard form, we have rho S. So we have written the value of R from the standard form and in this case the value is rho S. So the growth of investment depends upon the expression that is rho S because that shows if there will be exponential growth or decay. But here we can expect an exponential growth and the reason is that the values of rho and s, when they get multiplied, their signs, they give rise to a positive sign. Because s is also a positive value, so is rho. So both of them are positive values. When we multiply to positive values, we get a positive value. Hence the rate that is rho s in the exponential function, it remains an exponential growth. So let us see numerically how it can happen. We have assumed the values of rho and s. We have assumed that the value of rho is 2 whereas we experimented with the value of s and we assume that it can vary from one level to another. That is we start it with 0 0.01 and we increase it and it comes to the level of 0.5. So this gives rise to seven values of S and hence seven values or seven time paths depending upon the value of rho S. And rho S can be easily calculated simply by multiplying 0 0.01 with 2, 0 0.05 with 2 because the value of rho is 2. Simply by using the value of rho and multiplying it, 0.5 into 2 will be equal to one. So developing the rho s will be simply the matter of multiplying the value of s with 2, that is the value of rho. Now we write it in the uh, time path expression and you see that the rho s value is appearing where it should. And this i naught is appearing with all of them because in the formula it is present. We can simplify the thing by assuming that i naught is equal to 1 units when we do uh, the time path reduces to this form where i naught is not visible because multiplication with 1 definitely doesn't have any effect on the overall product now i naught is not present here and it is now simplified this series of the investment time paths now there are now seven time paths depending upon the various values of s that we can plot graphically and observe that how the investment time path will look like. So this is the set of graphs and clearly you can see that there are seven graphs. On x-axis we can see that we have plotted time because that is the independent variable. Investment is the dependent variable in this case. So it appears on y-axis and this is the value of i naught, that is initial investment that we assumed as 1 for this specific example. However, it can be any other positive value. Uh, now this is the first time path, this is the second one, third one, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. And you can see that their values in the exponent, that is the value of rho s, is varying it is starting from a lower value to a higher value and as it increases 
the investment time path it also shifts upward it means that it is having a surge an upsurge which definitely makes sense because rho is kept constant and we are experimenting with various values of s and as we increase the value of s the investment will also get a spur and it will shift upwards as you can see it is shifting from one point to another because greater propensity to save can increase the investment so this is how we can understand the domer's growth model in a graphical way where we have developed a time path on which the equilibrium between the demand side and the supply side is retained over time and it is a dynamic equilibrium so this recipe given by domer is now graphically represented as well as mathematically we have derived it we have tried to solve it numerically as well this was the third video in this sequence and we have completed the domer's growth model in a mathematical fashion thank you